So I just wanted to start by saying that I'm not going to be playing anything today on the violin. The reason why I'm not going to do that is that I have tried all these strings. I have put all the strings on my violin. Um, I have got some Daddario strings on, which I'll, I'll get to at the end of, um, of the set. But I have been trying them all out so I can see what they like. And I've been trying them on my acoustic, some of them on my electric violin as well. So I've tried them all out. Um, I felt that it would be very time consuming to make a video if I was changing strings. Um, and not only that, when you put a new set of strings on, it does take a little bit of while for them to kind of settle in and for you to get the tone and for you to, to listen to the tone. I've had some other people play my violin as well, so I can hear what it sounds like from being afar rather than having my ear next to the violin. You know, so I couldn't possibly do that all in one video. And not only that, um, it, you know, just the microphone just wouldn't pick up the different tone. There is a different tone and you can hear it in person. You can hear it if you're performing, but if I was just playing them side by side, it wouldn't, it would be very time consuming. It just wouldn't be worth it because they wouldn't come out enough on the microphone to, to, to make it worth kind of doing that. So having said that, I'm gonna go straight in and start by Daddario Preludes. So um, I don't have an actual packet of this, but I do have a kind of a photocopy of the packet of Daddario Prelude strings. So they look like this. I would say these ones are student strings. They are, they have a bright and a clear tone and they remain unaffected by temperature. They're good for replacing the Chinese or the factory strings that you get on some of the cheaper branded violins. Um, and at $15 a set or 15 pounds a set, depending, I'll put the links to where you can buy all these strings directly underneath this video as well. So for the money, I think they're a really, really good quality set. And like I said, they're so much better um, than just having the, the the factory strings that you get on a standard violin. So instead of having to shell out kind of 30, 40 pounds or dollars on a set of dominance or prestros or something like that, or that, you know, that, that then takes you into a, another financial bracket, you know, for $15, the Dario Preludes are really, really, really good value set without compromising on quality. So they're still a very good quality string. You still get a nice, clear, bright tone on them, which is fine. Um, so it's much better than the factory strings and you don't have to work so hard on them as well like you do with the factory strings. You really have to work hard to dig in and, you know, to get a nice, good tone. So that's those ones. Okay, so the next ones I've got are the Daddario Pro Art. Now they say they are constructed with a nylon core. These strings break in very quickly and offer easy playability, which means that um, whatever tone they have about them, you don't have to wait weeks and weeks and weeks for the tone to finally develop and everything. Um, they offer quick, uh, they offer easy playability, consistency and economy. They serve as an excellent choice for advancing students and amateur players, which having tried these, I would probably, I would definitely agree with that. They say that they're very warm, dark and complex sound, short break in time and excellent pitch to stability, which I completely agree with, more resistance to humidity and corrosion than steel core or gut strings. So yes, that's fine. This is what I say about it. Um, the Pro Arts, um, I think they're suited for a cheaper violin. So they're great if you've got a student violin that you've spent, you know, under hundred dollars or you know, something like that. You could even go up to something that you've spent sort of for two, three hundred dollars for. So as exactly as they say, um, they're great for advancing students and amateur players. So I think that's probably bang on the money. I think these are great for um, beginner students as well. If you've got the extra money, so these are twenty six dollars. 23 pounds roughly links will be in the description underneath where you can buy them so for 26 dollars i actually think you are getting 26 dollars worth of strings if you want something with better there are other strings that are coming up in just a second um so i think anything from beginner to intermediate violinist these are perfect for i think these are very bright and lively they say they're very warm they give a very warm and dark complex sound i think they're very bright and lively Having said that, I can't stress this enough. It really does depend what violin you've got. I'm only trying this on this. I'm only trying these on my violin. Mine's an antique violin worth quite a bit of money, 250 years old. It's going to respond differently to different strings. Um, you know, so the result is always going to be a little bit different, but they say they're very warm, dark and complex. I think from my opinion that they're very, they're very bright and lively. They do stay in tune quite a lot as well. So Suffice to say these are very good student quality violins and you will get quite a nice tone coming out of these. Okay, so your next ones are your Helicores. Now, Helicore titanium wound violin uh, with a titanium wound violin A string. 
So the price for the Helicores are $32 or around about £30. Now, Helicore is often preferred by alternative style and electric instrument players. I totally and utterly agree. Um, some of you guys may or may know, may or, not, may or may or not know that I have a Ted Brewer electric violin and I've, I always have Helicores, Dario Helicores on my electric violin. I've never had anything else on an electric violin out of all the years I've had when I always go to Dario Helicores. Not even Dominance, not Prastros. I don't even waste my time with that. The reason why I like the Helicores is that they are, they're just very durable, they're very strong, um, they just really love the electric violin sound as well. If I went for something like, um, for example, if I went for a set of Parastro Obligatos, they're very expensive set of strings, um, they would be lovely on my acoustic violin that I've got in the background here, for example, they would just be beautiful, and they are because I've, I've had them on there recently, before I had all the Daddario strings on there, however, if I put them on the electric violin, it's just like, oh, I can't, I can't think of what it's like, but it's just they're just too soft, they're just not, they're just not crunchy enough. You're playing with an electric violin, you know, with a piezo pickup or a, you know, whatever you've got underneath the bridge. So you need something with quite a little bit of, you know, gut to it, so to speak. So this is where these are really good because these, these really do hold it for them. So the Helicore titanium wound string provides an alternative to the standard aluminium wound Helicore. It is designed to stand up to rigorous playing, corrosive elements and fretted instruments. It just basically does what it says on the tin. So these are, um, you know, I suppose whether they make them specifically sort of for electric violins or not, this is basically, it's what the company have picked up on because that's what people are using them for, the electric violins. Um, so people often say, I've got an electric violin, what strings do I need? Can I use any specific strings? You can use any strings you like on an electric violin. It doesn't matter. You can use Dominance, you can use the Dario Preludes, you can use the Pro Arts, you can use whatever you like. But if you want to have kind of my go-to or the go-to string for an electric instrument, electric violin, then you're looking at the Dario Helicores. Um, you're not really talking so much tone when you're talking electric violin because that's just a whole different kettle of fish, isn't it? But these these are just ideal. They just really play up to the electric violin sound. So next up, we have the Kaplans. Um, again, I don't actually have a real um, kind of box for this or packet for this. I've only just got kind of a photocopy. The link, you, you'll see it if you click on the link underneath, but kind of look like, like these. So the Kaplans are a steel string. They are rich and bright, um, but they are a high quality uh, steel string. Um, that's all, the, all really the information that I've got on that one. Um, they're priced at around £40 a set or around $65 uh, as a set. Um, so they should be quite, um, they should be quite a good, good quality set. I haven't tried those personally. Um, but I know they are quite a good quality set. I've got some other Kaplans that I'll just get to in a second. Um, but these, the Kaplans are generally quite gen generally quite a good quality string from Daddario. Um, so yeah, rich and a nice rich and bright sound. If they're anything like the other Kaplans that I, I'll get to in a second, they should stay in tune and they should um, they should reach their well they should they should stay in tune very well and they should warm up very, very quickly also. So the next ones are the Daddario Zyx. So what they say, the Zyx strings retain great bow response in any dynamic due to well-balanced tension. They break in quickly and are 100% humidity and climate resistant, maintaining excellent pitch and stability. They have been designed for the most demanding musicians and work well on modern or brighter sounding violins. So that's what they say. So what I say about it when I tried these, I think these had a strong projection. I think they are very bright and clear, which is exactly what they say they are. I personally think that they are too much as a whole set. So I put the whole set on my violin, but I just, I just thought it was just too much. Again, it could have just been my violin. My violin um, doesn't like bright strings. I don't like, I like something a little bit warmer, something that's gonna make it a little bit sweeter. You start putting something too bright on my violin and it just starts just going mad. It doesn't like it. So I thought these were too much as a whole set, but I think if I had personally had these, so I'm talking probably for more of the advanced, much more advanced player. If I had these as a D and an A, 
they're perfect and then I have whatever I have on the e-string I like a Parastro gold label for example I do like Parastro obbligato as a G I like those in high tension as well so mix something on the outer end with these two in the middle and they're really really nice they just create a nice contrast I personally don't like to have something too exciting going on in the middle of my violin because it's just the middle I like it going on at either end that's why I have a nice E string that gives me a certain flavor a nice G that gives me a certain flavor and then I just have sort of something quite quite neutral and you know sort of nice in the middle so this is where these come in um, so they work well for the intermediate and professional player if mixed so you could use these if you're kind of a, a beginner or an intermediate they'd probably work fine for you and again they'd be fine if you were using um, uh, a, a modern or brighter sounding violin but for a professional player if you've got something you know like a, an older violin something like that they'd probably be better mixed and these are um, 36 pounds or 46 dollars okay so the last two coming up are the Kaplan Ammo and the Kaplan Vivo now these are the newest strings that Daddario have done uh, and they've they've given me some kind of pre-release sets to um, to review uh, and I've got the the Kaplan Ammos on my violin I've just had the Vivos and I've just changed them over to Ammos so what they say Kaplan violin strings offer professional level players an unprecedented combination of beauty and power in two op options. The Kaplan Ammo, which is what I've got on there, and the Kaplan Vivo. The Ammo provides warmth, richness, and flexibility for brighter instruments, while the Vivo, Kaplan Vivo, delivers brilliance, clarity, and a robust feel for darker instruments. Both sets settle quickly, exhibiting a rich tonal color, palette, and superb bow response. I would probably agree with all of those statements, just with the with the one kind of fact that um, the I thought the Vivo didn't quite suit my violin. But again, it's not that there's anything wrong with the strings because I agree with everything else it's saying. It just completely just depends on on the quality or the or the tone that my violin's giving off already. Remember, if you're an advanced player, you're going to have a much more expensive violin with a certain tone on it, and you'll know what that tone is. It might be deep, it might be dark, rich, velvet, high, low, sweet, you know, whatever. This one's quite, it's quite rich, it's quite vel velvety, yet at the top end it's got quite, quite a lot of um, sweetness in it. So it's, as someone once described my violin, it is a delicate flower. So I can't just go in there and put whatever I like on, on my violin. So the ammos which is what I have on now, I'm finding sound nicer than the Vivos that I had on there. But again, that's just personally on my violin. Um, with the Ammos though, they were easy to fit with no slippage. So sometimes when you put the peg, when you put the, um, when you put the string through the hole in the peg and you try and turn it, and as you're tightening it up, it's sort of, all, it's unwinding and, unwinding and slipping out. So there was no slippage in there. Um, all four of them balanced very, very well, which is, um, which is nice. It's nice when you've got a set that you can have the whole set and it's quite, quite nicely balanced rather than having it's all, it'd be like having the same meal every night for the rest of your life. Whereas those are kind of, they, they do create a nice variety. I'd say they are not really for beginners. I think they'd just be a bit wasted on the beginners. And um, I think these are better to tune with the pegs than the actual fine tuners. I don't know why, but it just they just seem to be a little bit more sympathetic to tuning when tuning with the pegs. Um, they warmed up quickly, stayed well in tune. They had a clear, bright, smooth um, sound to them. So again, the, the ammos are much better on my violin than the vivos were. I, the same thing, the same comments here go for the vivos as well. And I thought both sets were very, very smooth, very clear. Um, they were very, very easy to play. Um, they were really, really nice strings and I would buy them. Um, the only thing about them is that the G string, I would prefer a high tension on the G string. I do a lot of work um, at the moment where I'm playing, you know, where I like to play quite, quite high up there. When you get high up there on the G string, it gets much, much harder to play, not only with your fingers, but just you've got to work a lot harder with the bow as well. If you've got a high tension string, you don't have to work so hard. So you don't have to work so hard. You don't have to dig so much with the bow to get a, a nice smooth sound. 
um, you know, with a softer string, it doesn't respond quite as well. So I'd really like to, to try a high tension G string in both the Ammo and the Vivo as well. And I think that that would, I think then that would complete the set. But I would be happy to have the entire set of those on here. Um, but there we go. So that, that's my, sorry, it's been a bit of a long video, um, but I wanted to be as comprehensive as I possibly can. I'm sorry I didn't play, but it really wouldn't have, you know, it, it just wouldn't have come out. Um, enough to make it worthwhile doing all that for you. So thank you very much for watching. Um, hope it's been helpful as usual. Subscribe and all that kind of stuff. And I'll see you in the next video.